Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now this is a new week and it's going to be a glorious week. You know why? Because God has given us his word. Praise God. And that's what I'm here to share with you. And this is the hope we have in him. He said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And I want you to know the reason God is always with you is to bring his word to you. Praise God. So have hope this week. You know why? God is going to speak to your heart and you're going to hear him and therefore you will leave in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, before we go into the broadcast today, can we call for that daily bread? Because the Lord commanded us to do this and we have been faithfully doing it and he has never failed. Praise God. All the way showing up. So with joy in your heart and faith in your heart, can you join me now as we call for that daily bread? Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me freely in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the spirit of prophecy. And I've been sharing, I think for last week or the last two weeks, I've been sharing from Ephesians chapter 1 and from verse 18, where he says, the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. Amplified Version says, the eyes of your heart be flooded with light. Now that's so important because if light is not in you, no matter the anointing you carry, it will end up being useless. And sometimes, even as God's children, we don't know how to relate with this thing. So we don't even know the examples to follow. And we don't know the examples not to follow. Because everything that looks like the anointing looks good and should be followed. And that's because many times, uh, uh, we, we assume that way. Because many times we don't even know the mind of God concerning these things. But a good student of scriptures, you know, the Bible says these things were written for our learning. If you study the scriptures, Paul said to Timothy, he says, the holy scriptures are able to make you wise. They are able to make you wise. Why? Because with the things you see, the things you understand, will put some wisdom in your head. Because you question some things. It's written for our learning. And let me tell you this truth. You won't say you have begun to learn until you begin to question. The Bible is not just written so that we we'll just say, mm, it is so in the Bible, so let us accept it that way. You must ask questions, right questions, I mean. And you don't ask questions out of unbelief. You ask questions to understand. The difference in the kind of questions Zachariah asked Angel Gabriel and the question Mary asked the same Angel Gabriel. Now, in words, they were the same question. How? can these things be? That was the words they spoke. And one person was smooth with, was, one person was smitten with um, dumbness and the other person was giving explanation. Why? Because one asks the question out of unbelief. The other asks the question to know how to go about it. That was just the difference. So because Zachariah acts out of unbelief, uh, the angel had to give him some <laughs> discipline. You know that, right? Because you're a priest, you're supposed to know these things already, <laughs> praise God. When, when God tells you, I'm going to do something, you're an experienced priest. If you've been experienced in the word of God, you shouldn't be asking how. Because you've read about Hannah. You've read about Sarah. You've read about Sarah. And then you're saying, how? Because I'm an old man and my wife is old. What are you talking about? And you teach people in, in the synagogue 
every day when they gather that God can do all these things. So you see that now? So asking the right questions will help you understand. And that's why I'm taking time to teach you these things. So he said in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, The eyes of your heart be flooded with light. What kind of light? The right kind of light. You know what? Jesus, I touched on this a little, but let, let, me, let, me, let me go into it so we can begin to explain. John speaking about Jesus in John chapter 1. He said something very striking. John chapter 1 from verse 6. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. I want you to understand this. The same came for a witness. That is, John came for a witness. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the lights that all men through him might believe. Look at what he said in verse 8. He was not that light. Did you see that? John was not that light. But was sent to be a witness of that light. Now, I'm going to show you something that will really help you. And I pray the Spirit of God will give you understanding. Watch this. It says, John was sent to bear witness of that light. But John himself was not that light. Okay. Now, let's go to John. John chapter 5 and verse 32. Now, this is Jesus speaking here. I want you to understand this. It will really help you. Jesus was speaking here. Now, the one we read in John chapter 1 was John writing. Now, here, John was writing, quoting Jesus because he was there. There is another, there is another that beareth witness with me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Okay. Then he went on to say, you sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive no testimony from man. Follow this now. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, you sent to John. No, you, 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 you sent to ask John about me. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. And Jesus was even careful not to say he bear witness of me. He said he bear witness unto the truth. That means he testified of something that was true. Now, Jesus was referring to when they sent some, some guys to John and said, Look, who are you? Are you the one? And John said, No, I am not the one. The one who sent me, sent me to baptize. And he says, There is one that is coming after me. So John bore witness to the truth that he was not the light. Right? Now, Jesus now said something here. But I receive no testimony from man. But these things I say that you might be saved. If Jesus said these things so that you might be saved, then you better hear it with the intention of getting saved. That's why I'm sharing these things with you now. So hear it so that you will be saved. He was a burning and a shining light. Jesus referring to John. John was a burning and a shining light. I want you to catch this thing. John told us in chapter 1 that John was not the light. He was sent to be a witness of the light. Right? But he was not the light. And Jesus speaking here said, John was a burning and a shining light. 
And Jesus said, talking to those people, says, And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Now, Jesus said something, you know, we, we, we read this scripture and we just browse through. Jesus said, I don't receive witness from men. He, he said, he, if, if you read, if you read for, or maybe from verse 30, you hear Jesus say, look, I, I don't bear witness of myself. Then he began to turn over who, who bears witness of him. So he says, look, there was a man called John, you know, and he said, you sent to John. And John bore witness of the truth. And Jesus now said, John was a burning and a shining light. And you were for a season rejoicing in his light. They were rejoicing in his light for a season. But Jesus said something again. He said, I do not receive testimony from a man. Meaning, it's not John's testimony that I stand on. You need to understand. Because he, he went on to say, verse 36 says, but I have greater witness than that of John. Okay. What was the greater witness? The works that I do. They bear witness that the Father have sent me. Why? Because it's the Father that's confirming the works. So what, what am I sharing with you? John was not the light. But John, according to Jesus, was a burning and a shining light. And the people saw the light, his light. And they were willing to rejoice in his light, albeit for a season. Yet, he was not that light. Now, this is the problem with a lot of believers. There are several people who come out and they show as a burning and a shining light. Yet, they are not that light. I may not have time to fully explain this today, but we'll go into it tomorrow. Wherever we stop today, we'll go into it tomorrow because this is really, really important. Because sometimes we don't know how to pattern our lives. We don't know who to really follow. We want to follow Jesus, but many people are faced with lots and lots of distractions in so-called light. So there was a reason John specifically said John was not that light. There was a reason. Because now we go back to John chapter 1. And I'll show you something there. In verse 4, he said, talking about Jesus practically here. He says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So, what is light is life, the life of Jesus. So, the true light is actually the life of Jesus. So, when he said, John was not that light, he was saying, don't look at the life of John. Now, why would he tell us not to look at the life of John, a great man of God, filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? Yet he says, don't look at his life. Why? Because his life was not that light. I have to stop here today because of our time. But I promised you, I'll keep that promise by the grace of God. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. The reason I'm sharing these things with you is that you begin to pattern your life according to the light. 
And I, I trust God will go into different practical aspects of this. I pray that the Spirit of God will carry you this week. And He will open your heart and fill you with His truth and His light. And I pray that every darkness in every part of your life will be banished this week, even as the Word of God comes to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.